More new information tonight in the Casey Anthony case. We have Casey Anthony's text messages. Her text messages give us new clues about what Casey was up to. Casey has always claimed she was looking for her missing daughter on her own before the little girl was even reported missing. But these text messages paint a different picture. Little Kaylee was reported missing on July 15th. Now, three days earlier, Casey was not busy looking. On July 12th at 1.27 p.m., Casey gets a text message from an unknown person. It reads, if I get everyone together for you tonight, you down to have fun. Later that night, 7.41 p.m., Casey gets another text message from the same unknown person. It reads, back booth tonight, 80s, retro dancing, tonight, it's on. July 14th, 9.39 p.m., the day before Cindy Anthony reports her granddaughter missing, Casey gets a text from a different unknown person. Scoops tonight. Scoops is a nightclub in Orlando. The message also has a smiley face. Now the next day, July 15th, Casey Anthony's world begins to crumble. At 4.27 p.m. that day, Casey gets a text message from her mother. Call me ASAP, major prob. Now that may be the understatement of the century. That same day, starting about 8.40 p.m., Cindy Anthony calls 911 three times and eventually reports her granddaughter Kaylee missing. The next day, July 16th, the day that Casey Anthony is first arrested, she receives a text message at 6.50 a.m. It's from her boyfriend, Anthony Lazaro. It reads, where is Kaylee? Eight minutes later, at 6.58 a.m., Lazaro sends another text. It reads, why wouldn't you tell me, of all people, I was your boyfriend that cares about you and your daughter. Does it make sense to me? Why would you lie to me, thinking she was fine and with your nanny? Then, six minutes later, at 7.04 a.m., another text from Lazaro. This one, an important clue. It reads, who is this Zanny nanny person? 8.42 a.m. that morning, we do have a record of one text message sent from Casey. It's a mass text that simply reads, Kaylee's missing. She has been missing. She has been for 32 days now. Please, if you have any information, call me on my cell or at home. At that point, Casey's inbox is flooded with text messages. Over the next four and a half hours, Casey receives 47 text messages from 13 numbers. Later that morning, 10.04 a.m., Casey's ex-fiancee, Jesse Grun, sends her a text that sums up many people's feelings about the case. It reads, 32 days, is that a misprint? Join us live for LAPD homicide detective Mark Furman, forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Bodden, and Orlando defense attorney Diana Tennis. Diana, let me start with you. Um, Jose Baez has his work cut out for him with all these text messages, does he not? It certainly fills in the blanks as to what's going on. I, I wouldn't call it direct evidence of first-degree murder, and I think there's some question about whether all of them will be admissible to a jury. But my first thought is, no matter what the truth is, this is not normal behavior, whether your child is missing and you've had a part in it or you haven't had a part in it. There is almost a dissociative aspect to her behavior around these events. And uh, I, I hope that her lawyer is looking into, again, the, the mental health aspect of this because that, that, that may be what her defense needs. Yeah, except that the thing is that that's where all we lawyers, defense lawyers, go to the insanity defense. But I assume that the law in Florida is like every place else. It's, it's that, you know, you don't know that what you've done is wrong. And when you start covering your tracks and you start lying and hiding and doing all those things, that is, that is, so, that is such a big flag that, yes, you knew it was wrong. It's not like, you know, it's not like you didn't appreciate the wrongfulness. So she may, you know, this may look nutty to the rest of us, but not legally insane. Uh, and that may be true, but there are, there are aspects to her lying that even goes beyond what we think of as pathological lying. She seems to believe a lot of it, and, and uh, it isn't on, the same, isn't on the same ballpark as the rest of us when it comes to what reality is. I don't know. I just hope it's been looked into. Mark, um, as you go through this list of these text messages, the ones we highlight, um, what do you think? Well, I think the most uh, disturbing one, Greta, for Casey Anthony is, as she says, uh, on the morning of the 16th, uh, Ka Kaylee has been missing for 32 days. That means that the child has been missing. We know the child is dead. That places the time of death squarely on June 16th. Um, there's no doubt now that uh, that is the date of the death, and this is a corroboration. And now you can go from that timeline, the 16th, and start putting together that the body, the body that was already in putrefaction uh, stage of decomposition,
was placed in that vehicle after George Anthony saw it on the 24th. So between the 24th and the 30th, the child was moved from its original location after death. That's what the most important in these text messages to me. Here's another chilly one, Dr. Biden, on July 16th, one that's sent to Casey Anthony. This is after the one where she announced to the world that uh, the child had been missing 32 days. A, a response to her was, uh, did she say anything, meaning the nanny, that would imply that she wanted a child of her own before they ran off? Now, that suggests to me that this sort of elaborate story about, Z about uh, Zanny or uh, Zanida um, had been pawned off on her friends, and she's trying to do the big cover-up on that, which doesn't sh it shows someone thinking, someone being who knows that what she's doing wrong and, and not insane. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, that doesn't indicate that she didn't know the difference between right and wrong or that uh, she's in any way legally insane. Uh, but uh, it's interesting to me, uh, what I was thinking of, is with all these unknown texters, is any of them the father of the child? Well, you know, the, the DNA coming from the uh, skeleton, from the hair, from uh, uh, the, the bone marrow and all, should have by this time uh, told the police who the father was, and it'd be interesting if she's still having relationships with the father, or if the father knows something that's of significance in the investigation. Well, I don't think the father's ever been identified. I don't know if, if uh, even, regrettably, whether even Casey's aware who the father is with any level of certainty. Um, but, uh, you know, it certainly is, uh, you know, this does not show, at least Mark, I mean, there's nothing in any of these text messages that shows any concern for this child. That's, that, and the jury's going to hear that, Mark, right? Yeah, that's an understatement, Greta, and I think all of this will be admissible because uh, it, it doesn't even have to be acquired on a search warrant that can be scrutinized by a defense attorney, somebody that actually has a copy of these texts that is, uh, is allowed to have them can simply give them to law enforcement and they're it, admissible. So it can be argued all you want, but I know. It, it's, Diana, it's gonna come um, in. You know, I'm, I, and Diane, I'm with you, unless they can show that body was moved there after she went to jail, they're going to try to say she's insane because that's the last ditch effort, but it's going to be a hard push, a hard sell. I got to go. Panel, thank you. I uh, hope yeah. you all come back. Thanks, Coming brother. up.